It looks like, luckily, Massachusetts is hopefully either peaking or reaching the end of its peak right now. Um, what does that look like from a governance standpoint for the next month? Uh, so things will change. Uh, I mean, mostly they'll change sort of at the end of this period. People really need to think about not the next month, but uh, uh, years ahead. And it's a period that I've been calling adaptive recovery in most crises. Um, you know, you have the response, the hurricane comes and it goes, and you have the response, you save people, pick up debris, uh, but then you have the recovery, which is after the enemy is gone. Um, we're gonna, we're facing something we've never seen before, which is you're, you're adapting, you're recovering while adapting to the enemy still being amongst us. And, and that's gonna be true in, until th there's a vaccine. Now the good, the, which, if it comes. The good news is that we're gonna have so many more tools than social distancing. We've learned a lot. Uh, we can protect vulnerable populations. We can you know, uh, have rules about what we're allowed to do, employer rules, school rules, all sorts of uh, treatment, testing, lots of things we're throwing into a sort of you know, all-in approach. But nonetheless, um, it won't feel normal. Um, uh, and, uh, and mostly, I mean, our kids are still at home. I mean, there's, and, and we're still at home. So of course it's not going to feel normal, uh, but you'll see over the course of the summer, uh, you know, what's, what's sort of, I think derisively called or sort of, you know, not derisively, but you, you'll see over the summer, you know, opening up, right. As if that's intention with social distancing. No, social distancing always envisioned an opening up careful opening up. And we'll see different governors playing with different um, uh, policies from, you know, I'm highly critical of Georgia's governor for tattoos. You can't seem to do those safely. On the other hand, Michigan's governor has pretty stringent rules about uh, rec voting recreational activities for people who own boats. That's important for people to be able to let off steam. Um, there's new running rules in Somerville here in Massachusetts. So you'll see, you'll see hopefully, you know, uh, a sort of growing consensus uh, with sort of pockets of bad behavior throughout the United States. And Dr. Bordeaux, how do you see hospitals adapting to the post-curve surge? Right. Well, I think that we are seeing, I think one of the success stories here has been that hospitals really have been able to expand their capacity and sustain their workforce uh, in ways that we really couldn't even imagine them doing a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so I think that that's great. I, I think one thing I would really add um, is that this is a time when we're going to start to see all sorts of suggestions around miracle cures. Uh, we're going to see, you know, oh, this, you know, trial showed promise for this particular treatment, or over here they did this, and, you know, that's the answer. And I think we all just have to um, take a real pause and develop a little bit of discipline here because we're going to just be bombarded with these stories. There are hundreds of compounds that are being tested right now to see if it's effective. And, uh, and so we can't just have a population that jumps on any little promising thing. And the reason that that relates to the hospitals is because you know, frankly, a lot of the proposed treatments uh, and that are being tested have horrible side effects and can actually kill people. And so, you know, one of the things that I'm hearing from folks on the wards right now is they are also having to treat people who have tried, you know, whatever approach it was that they heard was was going to help them. So I, I think that that's been very surprising and I think extremely upsetting to people in the healthcare context. So I think, you know, hospitals for COVID are doing pretty pretty good and we're really white knuckling it still, but they're pretty good, they're hanging in there. But this other sort of set of issues that is coming up is uh, something I think we really, really have to get serious yeah. about. Well, pivoting to the fun segment, our sanity and sanitation segment, Juliet, it is a rainy, miserable, cold day in Boston. What are you doing inside that is keeping you safe? Oh. Imagine you're not running today. I have three children here. Um, my kids are older, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Um, uh, they're teenagers, and one one is home from college. So um, one thing I want sort of parents to know about teen kids is um, is they need their privacy, and they are often getting it um, in the middle of the night. They are getting it in ways that may seem 
rude or whatever else. This is as unnatural to them to not be able to be with either their peer group or to have quiet time alone um, as it is to us. And so uh, one, you know, uh, I have I have groups of, uh, of uh, girlfriend parents with kids the same age who are just like, you know, sort of insisting on normality. And I do think that that's, um, that's not fair to the kids. So as I said, give them a break, but in particular kids of this age who really do value, uh, who are figuring out who they are outside of the parental unit are all of a sudden now forced back in. Um, and, and so let them figure out ways to be alone. And often that means sometimes in the middle of the night. Well, you're here to hear first. Leave your teenagers alone. Give them some space. And uh, we will see you next week. Please feel free to hashtag questions from quarantine if you would like us to answer your question next week.